Mobile One. So I'm going to show you how to replace the master cylinder. You can see that that's angled kind of funny. It actually slopes that way. I'll show you the new one in a minute. But I've got it out of the trailer. This one's a removable one. Some of them are swinging away. This is from like circa 1993 on a four winds boat. So we just pull a couple of pins. We do a quick disconnect. First things first, I'm going to unscrew the cap here. From there, I take the end of the line and just depress it. It's kind of like letting the air out of a bike tire or something. I'm just going to hold down the little nipple here and it'll cause this to just drain out the end. Most of it's already leaked out through the master cylinder. What I'm draining here is pretty much just what's left in the line. From there, we're back to the master cylinder. You can see I've got a crow's foot end wrench and uh, this one's 3 8 I just get that up from below and then just make like you're tightening it since it's going down, Mr. Tyler. And then uh, just hit it with a 3 8 open wrench. If you pre-soak this with some penetrating oil, again all of these items are going to be either pinned in the top comment or they'll be available in the show more down below. Uh, but we just take this line loose and then we're going to drop it down and move it over just a little bit. That was easy. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to manipulate it. I haven't done this particular one, but because things transfer so easy from one field to another. And then we'll loosen that. If you loosen it while it's bolted to the tongue of the trailer, it's a lot easier. It's like having something held in a vise. I mean, that's exactly what we have. So we'll take this. And just Hand loose is fine. You've got four bolts in the top here. So you just take a ratchet and of course you see how these are all toward the back. I'm going to repeat that on the new one but the other nice thing about the way this is mounted is I was able to pre-soak it in uh, penetrating fluid. I use 3M brand but you can use PB Blaster or you can use uh, transmission fluid mixed with what is it acetones everybody's using and it'll just creep in there and just get all the rust free if you break one of these bolts it's not the end of the world you're taking the master cylinder out but it can create some difficulty and just more hassle if you uh, pre-soak them it's just so much easier when you're pulling the old master cylinder out it's important to get your cable and the square stop to feed down inside there so you can just shove that pull the tab back shove the cable down the hole when you go to pull the master cylinder out, it's really easy. From there, you just slide it up the slot and you're free. This cable really helps when you're putting it back together because you have that plunger that needs to line up right on there, but you don't have a lot of access. I mean, you've got a little bit here and there, but when you pull on the cable, you pull it up snug to this point, and you can watch through the master cylinder cap hole and just line it and pull the new one in uh, using that uh, cable. And it'll just pull it right into place. I'm sure that's not the sole purpose of the cable, but it certainly works. To replace this entire unit is about $300. To replace just the master cylinder with the simple kit that we have here, including the bolts and the sticker gasket, is about $50 to $70. Big time savings. It's almost three times as much for replacing the whole thing. Looking at the old master cylinder, you can see that the square opening is in the center, and on this one it's offset to one time side. So I'm going to have to cut out a little extra opening or else you'll risk having to pick it out later and having it fall in. So when you look at it and line it up over the top here, you can see that the hole's halfway blocked. So you flip it around the other way. And again, the hole's halfway blocked. So I'm going to cut that before sticking it on. You stick the gasket on here first, and then once you've done that, then you slide the gasket up in there. So with this in place, I'm going to put that in with the gasket on. I had to go back and clean this with brake parts cleaner because I couldn't get it to stay well enough to feed into here. There's an exploded parts diagram. This is really helpful to see how things go together, but it's basically there so that you can order parts or kits or whatever that you need. But it's a good work through for how it goes together. Alright, we've got our new bolts. I'm just going to set these on top so that they're ready to go. I'm going to pull the master cylinder up into place using the cable. This does a couple of things. For one, it gets rid of the slack on the cable. Make sure that everything's in play and going to work properly. But it also lines up the plunger with the push rod. And down through the screw hole, making sure that I've got this thing plugged in there. I think I've got too much cable slack down inside. It's causing it to not feed. Before putting the master cylinder into the back end on this particular unit, it's really important that you have this pulled all the way forward. It needs to swing down like that. So 
if you lift up on this that basically does it lock it in place with the backing lock but you can see that the damper pretty much holds it where it's at so if you put the master cylinder in with all that in place you're pushing against the damper that's hard in addition you can't get this to lock out if it's not all the way forward once you get it all the way forward like this then you'll have a lot better results okay now we're ready to feed this forward so with everything fed forward with our gasket in place uh, we can take the cable and pull on the cable to get all the slack out of the way and we should be able to uh, nurse this forward if you slide it back and forth a little bit up and down you'll get off of the edge or the lip of this thing there's a lip or an edge and the piston can get on the side here so if you wiggle it around it gets it to seat down in the center and then you can go forward so I've got it supported pretty well I can see that the gaskets in place so I'm gonna start these bolts by hand notice I can slide it forward or backward just a little bit but I just get everything to where it's supporting the weight of the master cylinder and then I'm gonna slide it to the back but you can adjust this forward or back and that's gonna affect how far it has to push before the brakes begin and then also what the ultimate final braking force will be kind of like how hard you're going to push on the brake for a fixed set Ta -da. so you can use some loctite if you want uh, but they do have those locking biting teeth or whatever that you call them on the head of the bolt uh, we're going to slide this back i like to have mine just grounded so it doesn't move at all it doesn't slide because if these are what you're using as your locking device and it slides back, that can rip metal material, cause your bolts to come a little loose. Given there would be spring tension and things pushing against the side of the bolt to make it not go, uh, this just seems reasonable to me, so that's what I'm going to do. Tightening in a crisscross pattern helps keep things even and give you a better seal on your gasket. Uh, there's kind of a fork in the road here. You can go one of two ways, or three ways, or four ways. You can put this in and get everything hooked up and bleed it that way or you can use a bleeding hose and run it back up and around and around because the system's so simple and only has one brake line coming out the back of it there's not a front and rear braking system i'm just going to put it in like this it's a good idea to get this as straight as you can to where the hole is not straight up not straight down not whatever just however this is, that's what you want to match. Is that stuff in there? Yeah, because the nut's down there. I'm like, this should be able to get up to that easily. Make sure it's straight with the line. Mine needs to go a little bit more like that. Now we are perfectly perpendicular to the bottom of this in the line. Get these started by hand. Get at least a few threads going and then follow up with a wrench. Remember, if it doesn't want to go and it takes a wrench to get it to go, it's not in right. And that wrench is not going to help you get it in. It's going to help you chew the threads. So pay attention to that. It's better to acknowledge a risk and avert the risk rather than have a risk that you're blind to sabotage your day. You can always make new lines, but it doesn't mean it's easier or faster. Well, we've got that snugged in. We're basically installed. Just need to put in some brake fluid and bleed the air from the system and put it back on the boat trailer. I'm just going to carefully pour this in. Bear in mind that brake fluid, if you spill it down the side, it's no big deal as long as you catch it. If it gets on the paint, it will eat the paint. No big deal. Let's clean it up. It does take some time for it to do that. How full should you go? Well, because it's hard to start and stop, I'm going to go pretty full because I'm going to be bleeding the system. and That'll save me from having to do some repeated motions but if you go too full it's going to spill out the top so the first thing I'm going to do is open the back end of the line with a screwdriver into an approved container and get it to uh, bleed out some of the air that's in the line by gravity long, long story short I'm going to gravity bleed it down just a hair this is the line coming out the back that's for the quick connect on the trailer end I'm just going to hold this down kind of block it I'm just going to push that in and get it to drip out a little bit if you close it all the way nothing's going to come out so you have to leave a little bit of a gap now we're back up on the trailer end I'm going to release the lock out so that we'll be able to use the brakes again I'm just going to pump this a few times I'm getting some bubbles coming out here I'm going to push it back up to the front push down again and come back here bleed some more air here you see how there's a lot more coming through now I actually got brake pressure really quickly there's some more air bubbles on the initial 
stroke. There's some more. I'm just going really small movements. That seems to be working the best. This is angled up so that most of the air should come out here. And it is. It's going so easy. I think this thing might just be self bleeding. All I'm doing is I just pull up, push down, pull up. Just very small movements. And this is what I get here. You just repeat. If air's coming out, you're being productive. I drilled a little ding in the screwdriver, and that way my lovely assistant can put the ding on the nipple. Go ahead and push it. And that way it's a good way to bleed the brakes. I push down on it, pressurize the system, show you does that at the same time, and then uh, things go out that way. So when we do this, we don't do it this way, we do it that way. And that way it squirts away from us instead of at us. Okay, don't push it yet until I say. Okay? Thanks. You are lovely. Alright. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, push down. There's more air coming out. Whoa. Okay, let go. Did you let go? Yeah. Okay, ready? Are you prepared? Don't do it yet. Mm -hmm. Alright, push down. Alright, let go. Good job. We're done. That's good. That means that we don't have any more air. Awesome. Give me five. Nice work. I'm not high fiving you with this hand because it needs to be a lot. Hello, call. camera. Good call. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. You can click one of these boxes to see my most recent video, or you can click one of the other two, which are projects on the same boat. On the same boat, I also did the water pump impeller, and then I did a uh, freeze plug thing where the freeze plugs had come out, and I developed a tool to save a whole bunch of money not having to pull the whole engine and outdrive and everything out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.